Very welcome today to our uh, video. Uh, we're just showing you around our gardens around the house. Uh, here we have a damson, and it is already has already flowered, and is set fruit. Uh, they're extremely reliable in Ireland, as are plums. And um, we have two plums over here, opal and uh, Victoria. Victoria being in the near ground, and opal further back. Uh, down here, we walk. And right over the way, we can see uh, our apple tree that's uh, basically coming into full blossom on this the 26th of April 2020. And um, that is a very good apple tree, uh, has great crops, and there are some other smaller little apple trees around it. This is another one, which is a little bit later bloomer, and um, as I say, apples apples are probably the go-to fruit in Ireland. They're very, very reliable. Uh, the most reliable fruit probably uh, you can have in Ireland between apples and, uh, uh, say, for example, something like raspberries uh, in a different category. Here we have down here is uh, blueberries and um, they have actually you see that they're starting to sit they have set also we have some baby uh, um, we have raspberries also they weren't exactly planted but they've uh, invaded the area they're very invasive and this is uh, another apple tree and uh, been there for quite a few years and uh, Grown very nicely, uh, fruits abundantly. We have um, over here. We have um, our red currant, and although it's not red yet, it, it, you can see the little baby currants on it. If if you're able to zoom in here, I do not know. right here and um, a wonderful fruit and above it here is a hazelnut and they also do very well in Ireland uh, no problem uh, we just walk you around now to uh, our front area Ready. Here we have uh, another one of our plums. Our, um, it's called uh, Warwickshire Cooper, and it has a tendency to um, have a kind of a spreading effect. Um, it seems like the wind actually might have got to a bit of a burn. That's one of the problems here. Is sometimes is if it's anyway exposed. The wind can really take a toll, even on a very reliable fruit such as a, a plum, which will have no problem growing, but uh, maybe it's the wind and maybe it is something else, uh, given that it's just this branch, but we will keep you posted on that one. Um, I'm not overly happy with it because it ha one of the warnings for I will give you on a plum is that they will set runners, and this is an example of a runner. Your parent plant is here, and your runner goes all the way over here, or it can go over to the other side, over here, and produce another plant. And uh, that's fine if you're in, maybe in a forest garden, but uh, we're not doing a forest garden here, and uh, we don't want that to happen. But uh, that's one of the problems possibly with, uh, with plum trees. So, moving on, we have... Um, some hollies planted for uh, shelter, and we have a few blueberries. Again, uh, fantastic crop of uh, fruit for Ireland. Uh, very reliable. We make jams out of them, and um, the way here. And uh, there is also a little crop starting to form on on them. And you can see where the flower once was, and where the berry is now. Forming closer to 
the stem. And moving on, some more gooseberry uh, planted here, and uh, more hazelnut here. Uh, this is a, a lovely, and I do not know the name. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a hedgen plant that we have, but I uh, I find it really wonderful for bees. They really flock to it. Um, and it's a great pollinator, uh, or a, a provider of food for them, I should say. Here we have a, a female holly, and you can see the little baby flowers starting to form right on it, right here. So it'll flower a little bit later. And uh, next to the holly, we have uh, one of the great staples is uh, rhubarb in Ireland, and uh, these are. Actually, we forgot to feed them this year, which is a shame, but we have our rhubarb, big leaf on it, red stem, and um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fruit. You can use it in pies or crumbles and uh, make a variety of desserts, and uh, it's just a fantastic food. So, um, moving on, we go to our... Um, and we will see um, that it's going to flower. It doesn't necessarily look fantastic at this point in time, but it looked a lot better earlier on. And we have a net in here to keep um, keep the hens out, which are able to free range around the area. And um, here we have. Uh, more kale, more cabbage, I should say. That's a pet of cabbage. Hello. And uh, here we have garlic planted here. And we had carrots over here in the past year. And uh, very good carrots. We have uh, variegated holly over here. Male and uh, that's uh, I think that's the male and that's the female. And um, we did a shelter belt of little hollies, so we're hoping this protects us from the west. And in Ireland, we get very strong winds in the west of Ireland, and it's why shelter is critical. And uh, the difference between some place that has no shelter and that has sheltered is huge. And in Ireland, there's a tradition of the stone wall uh, providing a lot of shelter. And it really is a totally different microclimate. If you have something like a walled garden, and, uh, that you can grow so many different things in something like that, and uh, with a micro, with its own microclimate. We're just repairing a, after a storm we had. Here, so we are working on that at the moment. Uh, we have a clematis that we had got a couple of, oh, maybe it was it a year ago or two, but uh, it seemed to have died on us, and I don't know exactly why, but those are the things. Sometimes there's casualties like that. We have our own uh, roses that we took from cuttings, and um, actually, I think Mina who is uh, in the Philippines, uh, she took these cuttings for us. But the roses are very easy to... The roses are very easy to, um, to grow. Moving on, we have our black currants and red currants planted in around here. So we have some... Uh, these are black currants going around here. We have um, something a little different. It's a hardy kiwi in Ireland and um, this one is um, a variety that just the name <laughs> escapes me at the moment but it is um, kind of red a kind of a red uh, flesh to it and that one over there has a green flesh um, and we hope the trellis is going along the top line With hardy kiwis, uh, 
you while you where you have two female plants, you always need a, a male plant. So we have our male plant over here, and we'll let him go do his thing and fertilize the, the female plant. Here, I believe uh, are these are the red currants. And um, last year we had, it hasn't been touched this year, but we had our uh, potatoes. And uh, this is beautiful. 